file formats, text, image, audio, animation, and video. So file formats are attached to all files stored on a system. They apply characteristics to a file which instruct a system on features related to a specific file. These features that may be related to file formats may be related to compatibility, which means what type of software applications may be able to open and use the specific file, functionality, how the actual file will run when opened by an application, as well as file compression, the fact that a file format has been published and then we're trying to reduce the file space it takes up when stored on systems. Files can be exported into different file formats for different purposes. So you may need to change the file format of a file from when you're editing it to when you publish it so that it can be used in specific contexts. So what we'll do now is we'll look at the different file formats and align them with specific media types, only giving a few examples of a few for each to kind of illustrate these features and functionalities of different file formats. So firstly, we'll take a look at text. So with text, firstly, we have the most basic one, which is a text file which may be seen as a .txt, which can be used obviously for just writing basic text within the file and notes, but is also used to write code at a basic level, as well as export data between applications. TXT files are highly compatible. So if I want to extract data or have a base for the data I'm creating and then export it to somewhere else, sometimes the best place to start for text is in a TXT file. And we're also saying here too, we're not talking about text just for publishing. We're talking about text that can also complete functions. And that's why we're referencing possibly to write code there as well. The second one is a doc, which is known to be a document file uh, popularized by Microsoft Word, but then they've gone beyond that now with their own extensions and all that. But here we are looking at text in a formatted aspect where text can incorporate uh, 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 formatting and spacing and paragraphing. So we're actually looking at more published documents here, as well as make use of templates. Doc files too can also incorporate the other media types into them as well, specifically image uh, so that we can create uh, proper documents for things such as brochures and manuals and all that. So bringing elements together, but obviously expanding on what we can do with text by adding that layer of formatting. The final one we look at then is a portable document format or a PDF, which you may be very familiar with. We know PDFs all the time and often used for published text, but these PDF files can include hyperlinks, buttons, forms, okay, things that actually make the text-based document interactive for users to access. So they can do things within the file. They can enter in their information and their signatures onto the actual file and save it and possibly send it back to someone. All right, using those features, so adding interactive documents. The other benefit of a PDF as well is they can be locked. The text within the file can be uneditable. So you only fill in the areas that the publisher wants you to fill in. Everything else is in a fixed state. You can't change it, helping retain the structure of the text file, okay, and making it so that it's easy to understand and follow and can't be corrupted essentially by anyone when they're doing their editing. It's adding the, maintaining the structure of what the publisher wants. So they are just some text file formats. Next, we'll take a look at image, okay? And with image, the first one we have is a joint pictures expert group, a JPEG file which is used for storing digital photos, okay, which it can support up to 24 bits of color, which is a large amount of color there, and makes use of what's known as lossy compression. So it's saving the photos at a high quality with lots of colors, but you cannot decompress this because it's using that lossy compression. So it's good for a finalized published image that you're not planning on doing too much to for. And that's why it's really good uh, use for digital cameras. You take the photo and then it saves the photo at that high quality with a lower file size. The next one is a portable network graphic, a PNG, which is used to create web-based images, including an 8-bit transparency channel. So this is good for creating images for the web. The file sizes are lower, the quality is probably a little bit lower, all right? But you have this transparency feel that you can make um, transparent colors, all right? And it makes use of lossless compression, which means we can decompress the image back into its full file format and then actually edit it again. But the real strength of PNG is, as stated here, used for online images. And then the last one is the graphical interchange format. The GIF image or GIF image, there's a lot of arguments over how to pronounce this. These are good for low quality images, okay? Though uses lossless compression as well, but 
it obviously has a very low file sizes and we can, they're very flexible what we can do with GIFs. But obviously this is probably the lowest of the file sizes of more, but also the lowest of the quality too. All right, and you'll see a bit more what we can do with GIFs when we get to animation. The next level we'll look at is audio. So with this media type, the most one that's known is obviously MP3, which is the most mainstream for a specific reason it obviously retains a high level of quality of the audio that is being produced by the file format, right? But it's the compression that's put on it, which was to a fraction, one tenth of the actual other compression methods used for audio at the time. It's been around for a while now and is still the most mainstream file format used for published audio because it creates audio at such a low file size, it can be, then be streamed at faster rates because there's less file to transfer. And as said, maintaining a high quality. Another example is the waveform audio file format, the WAV file, which was used by Windows systems for raw and typically uncompressed audio. So this might be in a state where you're still editing the audio. Okay, audio recordings are saved at different sampling rates, which means how many times a sample of data is taken from a sound wave. All right, and you can pick how many times it is done because it is still in an editable state when in a WAV format. But obviously, being uncompressed, it is of a very large file size, but our purpose at this point is editing. And then the final one is the musical uh, instrument digital interface, the MIDI file format. And this is your old school computer sounds like the Super Mario theme, okay, where collected audio data is displayed through these computer generated sounds, okay, making these beeps to make music and all of that. All right, and uh, we don't see as much of that around these days, but old school gaming, that was the standard for its music pretty much with those beeps uh, being what makes the sound through the MIDI file format. The next media type we'll look at is that of animation. And here we have GIF or GIF once again. Because the file size was so small for the images, we can string them together and still make a very low sized animation using the same style, uh, kind of structure to stringing a series of images together. So we're creating the uh, animated images, but once again, they're very low quality, but they're great for the internet. You can see people respond with animated responses in social media, okay? And yeah, it's obviously a, a very low quality, but a very low file size, meaning they load quickly and they're easy to access, okay? And great for quick little images and some fun on the internet. Another file format is a scalable vector graphic. And so here with the SVG file, we're talking in a vector graphic, graphics that are made up through mathematical formulas and calculations, which means you can change sizes with ease and all that. But the thing with vector graphics too, they're often used with design programs for drawing um, high-end graphics or um, architectural drawings or engineering drawings. Sometimes when you need 3D context to be given to a potential client or customer, and in that aspect, you want to be like rotating images and show the full 3D spectrum. So we do need movement in those graphics. So that is the purpose of the SVG animation to show the movement and actually have a look around through the design of these images. And then the last one we have here is actually probably the most common web based file but not format really uh, used on the internet. And that's HTML5 for animation. Okay, so it is not a file format, but is used to create interactive and animated web content without the requirement for external plugins. So you can actually create it using the web-based code of HTML. All right, so that's pretty much the most mainstream used, though it's not a traditional file format there. The last media type we'll look at then is that of video. And as we said with MP3 for audio, MP4 is synonymous with video for the exact same reason. High quality at extremely low uh, file size based on this compression rate. Okay, it allows for obviously the movie file itself to be shown, but also supports the audio and text that accompanies those movies. And obviously audio is the people speaking and the music of the movie that you're watching. And then text being used for subtitles. So it actually brings the other media types in with it too. And because of its low file size, can be streamed at a high quality. So through your streaming platforms, you are most likely watching an MP4 file being streamed to your system, the video data along with the supporting audio and text data too, to give that full movie experience. The next file type is then that of a ProRes movie file or a MOV file. And this is made by Apple and it's a format used for importing data 
and editing data. And so once again, we're in an editable state here, which means a larger file size than we'd have with MP4, but we're editing at this state. We're still manipulating it and we're creating the actual move file that we want to create. And then the final one we have is an audio video interleave, an AV file, which allows simultaneous audio and video playback, can be used for streaming, but not to the level of quality of an MP4. So I hope this video has given you an understanding of some different file formats that can be used for a variety of different reasons, but most likely covering the areas of compatibility, functionality, and file compression. What we can see here is a lot of file formats used when we're creating and editing media, and then file formats that are used for publishing media using compression to reduce the file size so that it can be streamed and distributed as well. So I hope you can see those distinct categories here and obviously see how different file formats relate to the different media types.